Hello everyone. Today we're talking about eukaryotes again, and we're going to talk about the mitochondria in more detail today. The mitochondria looks a lot like this. Um, it really looks like this. This is under a microscope, but that's hard to label. So this is an artistic rendition. The mitochondria has parts that we should know about. It has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane. So two membranes. It's also interesting because it has its own DNA, has its own ribosomes, and it has those two membranes. This is because a long time ago it was a prokaryote, a bacteria living by itself. And then through, through phagocytosis we ate it, although we did not digest it. Instead it became part of us. That is why it has two membranes one from our ancient cell, Luca, and the other uh, from itself. So that is why it has two. It also has its own DNA, separate from our nucleus, and it divides independently of our cells. Typically, athletes will have more of it. And so what does it do for us? Well, we feed it food, and it gives us ATP. We call this relationship endo, which means inside, symbiosis. That is because it is a prokaryote that lives inside of our cells. And it now relies on us. And we rely on it. We could not live without our mitochondria, and they could not live without us. So we have to feed it food, but what kind of food? Well, we feed it all sorts of stuff. Um, we could feed it ketones, which is from fat, or we could feed it glucose, which is what our SOL test cares about. So that's what we'll talk about. So glucose goes in and ATP comes out. So then what's ATP? ATP is a lot like a battery that has to be full to work and it powers our cells. When it is used up, it is ADP. ADP is like an empty battery. It's an ugly battery. So ADP becomes ATP thanks to the mitochondria. We are consumers because we can't make our own food. Producers, they have chlorophyll in which sunlight is used, actually hold on, sunlight is used to help make glucose and then that energy is transferred to the mitochondria and that makes ATP. We cannot make our own glucose so we have to eat it from either plants or animals to make our ATP. Again, ATP is like a battery, and the mitochondria is like a battery charger. And so let's talk about how it makes ATP. The process is called cellular respiration, and it has three steps. One, two, three. The gly glycolysis occurs cytoplasm, which is all this space out here. So we're not even in the mitochondria yet. What we do is we take that glucose that's made during photosynthesis and we cut it in half. Why? Because we want its electrons. Electrons are the glue of molecules and when you take them, molecules become unglued. And so that's what happens. 
pyruvate is made when you break glucose in half, and we put those electrons on a carrier molecule called NADH. We also get a little bit of ATP. Next we go to the Krebs cycle, which happens in the matrix, which is this green part. In the matrix, uh, we take that pyruvate and we make CO2. Ignore this whole cycle thing. <clears throat> so why do we break it apart? Um, well, basically we're breaking it into a single carbon molecule. So there's three carbons in each of these pyruvates that we could break down. And that's what we do. CO2 then leaves the mitochondria and we exhale that. We breathe that out. So the reason we did this was to get more electrons. So we have, um, so far, NADH that was made here, two of them. And then we have eight of them that were made here. And two of these new uh, carrier molecules called FADH2. So basically, we, we just took glucose and we unglued it. We first unglued it to make pyruvate, and then we kept ungluing that to make CO2. And now we have all of these electrons, and that's what we're going to use next right here. So those electrons are used in this part right here, the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain takes the electrons here and it moves them in a series of steps on this membrane here. It gives the electrons to proteins like this and that makes them negative because electrons are negative. That will attract hydrogen which is pushed into the inner membrane space that is represented with blue. All of that hydrogen starts to build and build and build because the negative electrons push them there and that creates a concentration gradient. And so this hydrogen here is growing in its concentration so this part is high and the inside is low it really wants to get back in, so we let it through a special protein that we'll talk about in a second. That special protein then generates a whole bunch of ATP, about 34 ATP. And so the total is uh, two ATP were made in the Krebs cycle, two ATP are made in glycolysis, and so altogether that's between 36 and 38. ATP. All right, so again, um, glycolysis happens here where pyruvate is made. Uh, then we take that pyruvate and we put it in here. That is then broken down into CO2, which is exhaled. The reason we do all this is to get electrons. <clears throat> we then put those electrons on this membrane here. That membrane becomes negative, which makes all these hydrogens start to fill the inner membrane space. That is going to power a special protein called ATP synthase, which we will take a look at now. ATP synthase is a molecular machine that works like... Okay, so what we're looking at here, this part, oops, this part out here, those yellow things are hydrogens that have been forced <clears throat> against their gradient using electrons. So electrons uh, eventually move to hydrogen pumps here in the membrane, and those hydrogen pumps are forcing those that hydrogen through. This is an electrically powered protein that pumps hydrogen through. And so the result is all this hydrogen up here. It now really, really wants to go back. Strong concentration gradient. So we let it, but we let it go where we want it to go. So watch how that works. Like a turbine to convert the energy stored in a proton gradient into chemical energy stored in the bond energy of ATP. The flow 
of protons down their electrochemical gradient drives a rotor that lies in the membrane. It is thought that protons flow through an entry open to one side of the membrane and bind to rotor subunits. Only protonated subunits can then rotate into the membrane away from the static channel assembly. Once the protonated subunits have completed an almost full circle and have returned to the static subunits, an exit channel allows them to leave to the other side of the membrane. In this way, the energy stored in the proton gradient is converted into mechanical rotational energy. The rotational energy is transmitted via a shaft attached to the rotor that penetrates deep into the center of the characteristic lollipop head, the F1 ATPase, which catalyzes the formation of ATP. Okay, so uh, this is a perfect picture right here. So we've got phosphate, which is the P, and you got ADP. So I told you that is like a battery that needs to be recharged, and then ATP is over here coming out, and that's a fully charged battery, ready to do work for the cell. So we have to add these together, and that's what we do. We jam that phosphate on there with the rotational energy of this special protein, and that makes ATP. This can only work when we eat food. If we eat food, we can electrically power the, uh, the, the electron transport chain, and that will create hydrogen ion gradient, and that will power this. So that's all we need to see there. Right, so that is going to generate tons of ATP for us. And now we'll just uh, sort of go over the formula. So what has to go into this? We need glucose. And what comes out is ATP. However, we also need oxygen. And then the waste product that is generated from oxygen is H2O. We also make CO2 when pyruvate is broken down in the matrix. So why do we need oxygen? Okay, let's talk about that. Oxygen is needed because if we're on this membrane and we're bouncing these electrons along, Well, what happens when the electrons are done with? We need something for it. So oxygen comes in, it takes those electrons, which make it electronegative, and then that electronegative uh, oxygen picks up some hydrogens, and so oxygen becomes H2O. And that is why we transpire. So again, the whole formula altogether is... Oops. For cellular respiration, we have glucose, and we need oxygen. We then create ATP from that, CO2 gas and water. And that's pretty much it.